In this video, we're going to discuss integrating Emoticon TM3 Distributed I.O. into Emoticon Unity or Control Expert platform. That would be for the M340 or M580 typically. This product can also be used with uh, third-party products such as uh, Rockwell with Ethernet IP architecture or any of the Emoticon platforms such as the machine platforms, the M controllers listed below. The module itself is, is actually a very skinny module. It has two Ethernet ports, so it's very easy to daisy chain uh, drops on itself. And one of the things that I really like is it actually comes with a mini USB connector. So out of the box, you can actually connect with the USB cable, which is the same USB cable you use for all Modicon controllers in the HMIs, to connect to it and download a configuration to get started. To give it its IP address, there's two rotary switches up top here. So these, these rotary switches, there's a, a ones column and there's a tens column. If I actually put the one switch into the auto position, uh, there's a fixed IP address that you can configure using the USB port. If I put it into a, a, a number on each one of these things, like 0102, it gives it actually a role name that you fill out inside of the software where it uses DHCP to then give this an IP address. We will demo that inside of Unity. So this TM3 architecture, you can add up to seven IO cards to the side of it, a bus expansion, and add seven more cards. This is also a very nice way because we actually have safety relays that we can plug into this IO architecture to do cable pulls, e-stops, safety mats, that type of stuff. So now we're gonna demo actually using the software. So if I actually come in here, I'm going to open up Unity. And right now in Unity, I'm scanning words from the actual device itself. And I'm breaking it out in this function block to actually look at digital inputs. And the converse is true. I'm actually writing outputs from the PLC to the scanned word that's going out to the uh, device itself. So right now we have two outputs that are on. If I actually go online with the device itself, here's uh, Explorer for Chrome, and I can go into monitoring on the online here. It's detecting it. I can click on the actual output card, reconcile it with the actual card that's actually there, and I can see yeah, the Q0 and Q2 are on, which match up with this output. If I go to Q5 and simply turn that on, That turns on, I'm looking at 37 as a decimal value. I can see it's 37 decimal come in, which turns Q5 on as well. So I can see that Unity is turning on this drop in this island. So it, to get started, what I did was I, I created a help section inside both these function blocks. So I can come here and refine this function block. And there's a getting started, which is really just a commented out structured text section. And when I go online, typically it's going to be with the USB using the default IP of 90001. I need to know what the username and password. The default out of the box is username as administrator, administrator, and password as administrator. The first thing that's going to have to happen is you have to change that password. So try to remember that. Then we go online with the 90001. And we have to choose how we're going to do our IP address for it, whether it's in the auto position or whether you were using the naming convention to do DHCP out of a product like Unity, which we will show inside of Unity. And then we go and we download a software, this offline software, the TM3 bus coupler IO configurator. You simply put this in Google and the software's free and you can download it. So I've already configured this bus here. And if I look at the bus that's actually configured, I click on the button, the actual bus coupler itself. I go to my memory mapping and I can see that I have input and output words. It tells me where in this bus coupler these words are. And there's one word, so I have one input card. So that's one word, makes sense. And one output card, so the same thing. I have one output word there. If I want to go into the details on that, I can come to the inputs here. And I can actually tell that that first word is the TM3 digital input. And the output is the DQ, uh, the 16 output card. So I simply have to add this information into the Unity I.O. scanner table and match it up, and we're off and running. If I wanted to add another card, I simply come here. I click Insert Card. I pick the card that I want to add. I'm going to do something that's a little more complicated than a digital card, and I'll say Insert. 
I can give the module a name. I can click on that card. I can put it in the proper order that I want at the bottom. And then when I click on this card, you can see here, I can say that uh, it's a 4 to 20. And then I can give the scaling and user units that I want inside here. So once that's done, I save this file on my um, desktop somewhere. I can also remove this by clicking here and just saying remove, and it removes it. I click on the uh, desktop and to save it. And then what I want to do is go to Chrome. And I'll start from scratch here. Actually, I go here. I'm already logged down. I go to configuration. I need to open a configuration that was developed offline. So I'm going to open that file that I saved it as. It's going to be the Modbus version of it. Loading the project. So I can see that offline configuration is brought into Chrome for me. And I simply apply that to the unit. And that unit now is configured. So inside of Unity, if I look at that, I'm going to go to my IO scanner table. Go to my IO scanning. I can see that I, I put the IP address that I actually want the uh, island to be. I can see that I have my one word that I'm reading, and that's the word address 3001 that I looked at the memory map, and I'm putting it in word 501 inside the PLC. And on the output, I'm writing one length. I'm writing it to this word, and in the PLC, I'm writing word 601 to that word, and that's how this works. To get started, I actually also enabled the... Uh, address server and when you enable the address server here you can actually see that this tab becomes bolded and I had to use the appropriate naming convention to use this I could have also done it by MAC address but I think it's easier with the naming convention and so for the bus couplers the naming convention always starts out TM3 BCEIP underscore and then it's the uh, the two rotary switches so the first two are for the tens column and I left that at zero, and then the rotary switch for the ones is one. So since the rotary switch is on this position, when I power up that switch, it's going to give it this IP address, and then I'm all set. So now that I have the IP address, and I have my scanning table set up for it, I can actually come into my data table, and I actually created an IODDT for my Ethernet card uh, on the actual unit itself, and I can see here that if I expand on that in my table, that right down here, under the refresh, I can see that is a 1. I know that I have a healthy transaction going back and forth to the uh, actual island itself. So right now we have a Unity project. We have all the scanning for it. We've used the software for there. We are up and running.